Welcome to Falcons Inside the Locker Room to our beautiful CW Falcons Atlanta studio right here. I'm J.P. Peterson. We are presented by Northside Hospital, and the news is good as the Falcons win 31-24. Remember, after each and every game, we will be right here. We'll have head coach Dan Quinn for you, Dave Archer standing by. We'll have all the key players for you, highlights, everything you need to know that everybody's going to be talking about for the next couple of days. We'll start it off right here. And we'll start it off with a 31-24 win for Dan Quinn in his first outing as the Falcons coach. You know, when Arthur Blank made the change from Mike Smith, he wanted dynamic leadership. He wanted someone to change the culture. And if we didn't see that tonight, uh, I'm telling you, this was about as perfect a script as Dan Quinn could ever want. He got great ball security from his offense. Their first uh, possession, they go uh, down the field, 10 plays, 91 yards, stick it in the end zone. He got turnovers from his defense. He wants them to be fast and physical. Two turnovers and a sack. He wanted this team to tackle with leverage. We saw that tonight. So a lot of fun to watch. Let's take a look at some of the highlights and show you what happened tonight as the Falcons win 31 to 24. And as I mentioned, the offense started very fast. And we'll get to the highlights in just a little bit. In fact, let's go out to the Dome right now where the guys who called the game tonight, Randy and Coy, are standing by with a little recap of tonight's game. Guys? Well, thank you, JP. You know, if you're, if you're head coach Dan Quinn, first of all, you know, you're used to winning, and he, and he won. We all know it's preseason, so you look at a bigger picture than that. But also, you couldn't script the first part of this game any better any better you're right uh, the offense came out on fire obviously the connection between Matt Ryan and Julio has only gotten stronger after another offseason spent together that shined immediately on that first drive opening drive when they went 91 yards and Julio Jones accounted for 61 of them yeah that was an exciting exciting way to start the game now well, what did you think Cohen? I mean I know that, I mean you you played nine years in this league so you know what it's like on this night in your at your this point in your career and your life if you're one of these young guys or even maybe a veteran who's kind of on the edge and not assured of anything who, who do you think made an impression tonight that we might remember and coaches more importantly would remember I think Alan Bradford stood out especially with his special teams play is a guy that flashed a couple of times on the defensive side of the football but the newer additions to this team you saw an interception from Justin Durant and we saw the defense getting sacked so that was good to me in terms of this scheme I think that's just as important as the pieces that this organization has brought in bringing good hope and a good start here for the season. Well, let's take a look at a, a guy that's in his eighth year. It doesn't seem possible, but Matt Ryan's in his eighth year. And we mentioned that, that opening, and it was, it turned out, uh, Ryan's uh, only possession of the night, finding uh, Patrick DeMarco, the fullback there, then Julio Jones over the middle. And this was the touchdown. Parrish Cox, the DB, who was a little bit out of position, and all Julio needs is a little bit and a couple of strides, and he's gone. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting to think about what he is going to do this season for this offense but also impressive the offensive line was able to protect Matt Ryan on the short amount of time he was in there they did that with their blocking but also with the scheme you saw Matt Ryan on the move a lot a lot of boots and mixed misdirection to get Matt out of the pocket where someplace he really excels well one thing that Dan Quinn emphasizes and I know every coach does to some degree but whatever they were doing in Seattle aside from the fact they had talent there's no question about that whatever they were doing there sure worked as far as the turnover department and let's take a look at the uh, especially the first unit defense uh, early on in this game against uh, Marcus Mariota the Heisman Trophy winner going down right there on the sack and then the pick by Justin Durant yes I'm talking about a Heisman quarterback they sacked him they picked him they stripped him and there we go in the scoop and score with Paul Warlow taking it in now you look at the interception there late in the game. Some young Three defensive easy. players yep. really stepped up. But Benson had a great game. There's Charles Godfrey, the wildly veteran at, at free safety. But this team, if you look at this, the stats, they did exactly what they wanted to do defensively, stripping the football, creating turnovers, creating havoc in the backfield, something this team has really lacked in years past. Coy, I enjoyed it a great deal. And you know what? One thing we're going to do in New York, well, we'll try to avoid a little bit of the zoo when they play the, play the Jets up there next week. But you mentioned Mickey Schuler and, and uh, being a Penn State guy, and uh, you grew up in Pennsylvania. We're going to talk next week about why you didn't go to Penn State. <laughs> All right, let's do that. that that's a good one. That's a good that's one. A good I story. promise you that. <laughs> JP, back to you. 
Oh, that's a good tease. Good tease. Great job, guys. Uh, great call tonight. Fun to watch uh, the Falcons come out of the Dan Quinn era, get a big W, and do everything he's been talking about in the offseason. It's one thing to talk about it. Coaches love it when the players go out and do it. We will hear from the coach. Coming up next, we'll head back out to the Georgia Dome. My man Dave Archer standing by with Dan Quinn. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. Falcons Inside the Locker Room is presented by Northside Hospital, a lifetime of care, and sponsored in part by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. The Georgia Lottery, you can't win if you don't play. And SunTrust, how can we help you shine today? And welcome back to Inside the Locker Room as the Falcons open the Dan Quinn era with a 31 to 24 win. Nice job by the second and third team coming back to score the winning touchdown because it's one thing for your first teamers to go out and play the way they did and that was fantastic. It's another thing for the other guys to come in and get your win. And you talk about 1-0 all week long. You talk about your head coach getting his first win at the Dome. It's all good stuff. Let's head down to the Dome right now for the man that called the game on the Falcons Radio Network, Dave Archer. And Arch, if you're head coach Dan Quinn who you'll talk to in just a moment he can't be much happier than what we saw tonight no I, I think that uh, certainly what you wanted in the first couple of weeks of camp is to to try to identify that you're going to be fast and physical and I thought they played that way certainly their first units played that way and I thought as the second units kind of got their feet wet they began to play that way as well so the the message of fast and physical certainly translated they got the ball out they were able to put the ball in the end zone I think uh, perfect opening act and and Wes Durham who I do the games with on the radio came with an unbelievable stat this is the first time that a head coach in his first preseason game has been able to win that game since June Jones got all the way back to uh, 1993 when June Jones won his first game in his first preseason so it's been a long time coming since Atlanta had been able to open the season with a with a win for a new head coach but uh, Quinn's guys got it done tonight. Hey, Arch, let's talk a little bit about the defense first. Uh, a couple of takeaways, that first-team defense. I mean, we know 32nd last year. They needed to get some playmakers. They go out and get Justin Durant. What does he do? He gets a pick and almost scores. They get a, script, a strip sack for a score. I mean, this is the culture that Dan Quinn wants, right? Yeah, and I think that if you looked at the big picture, JP, and you touched on some of the plays there, and those are the plays that were certainly created uh, the, the problems for Tennessee, but it was the havoc around the ball. And I think that's what, you, when you start to look at Dan Quinn's defenses, and if you go back to look at the Seattle defenses, the, the havoc around the football, quarterback being bothered by people around him, the ball carrier got people stripping at the football. Uh, contested catches those are the kind of things linebackers breaking on a screen play that they diagnose perfectly Justin Durant diagnoses that thing perfectly Babino gets the ball out of the hand of Mariota those are the kind of plays that you're looking for around the football is there havoc capping happening around the football and that's certainly what the defense did tonight I thought all right, Arch, the other question mark was the offensive line. I thought they did a great job on a couple of uh, blitzes. Matt Ryan got the ball out to the open receiver. The run blocking, not great tonight, but the play action certainly got things done. How did you think the offensive line played tonight? Well, I thought they did a nice job with the pass protection, no question about it. And that's obviously where your, your bread's buttered right now is you can throw the football in. A really nice combination to, to see that kind of a midseason form, if you will, Ryan to Julio Jones. And Julio had four catches, one of them for a touchdown, counted for 61 of the 91 yards in that touchdown drive. Uh, but Ryan was on target with all his throws. You, did, you didn't get what you wanted out of the run game, but I think that's going to be a process. I think that this offensive line is going to have to grow together. They certainly, I was concerned about the pass protection. There's been so much concentration about running the football in camp and stretch running plays and the zone running game and, and all those kind of things a little concerned that maybe pass protection had kind of gotten left in the uh, by the wayside not tonight I thought that all five of the guys that protected Ryan did an outstanding job and as I said as the game went along some of those guys that were kind of thrown together as a second and third offensive line unit I thought they did a really nice job too providing TJ Yates and Sean Renfrey opportunities to make plays and throw the football so the message certainly resonating with the big fellas up front obviously got to get the ground game cranked up got to get some of our backs healthy get them back on the field but I think it could certainly happen. And uh, JP, we're we're uh, we're right in the holding pattern, waiting for the head coach. And uh, I think Coach Quinn is headed this direction. So uh, 
If you'll stay with me here, you but just it, it, a nice night for the for the team. Obviously, uh, uh, Coach Quinn, as I said, the first first head coach to win in his first game since 1993, since June Jones. Dan, uh, performance. I know you haven't had a chance to watch the tape, obviously, but just your initial thoughts on how your team played. I think uh, the first thing that jumped out to me, I was loved the the fast start by the offense. I thought. Uh, just some really quick rhythm throws by Matt, you know, went to a number of guys. So I like that one, just the attacking mindset for them. Um, defensively, I like how we responded early, you know, and for getting, you know, I think we got a, you know, it was the screen that we had a nice play on, then a, you know, the inter or the fumble return. So uh, getting the turnovers and seeing if these guys could ball hawk, uh, that, I was really looking for that in the game. And I wanted to see how we tackle. I thought we tackled well, especially early on. I thought your your message had been fast and physical, and they certainly, I thought it started from the opening gun, your special teams yeah. played with a purpose tonight. Yeah. I thought they were tackling inside the 20, making plays on your coverage units as well. No doubt, and Keith really nailed it, you know, in terms of there's going to be some mistakes. That's part of the preseason. But let's make sure we are absolutely flying when we do that. And I think that was certainly the case. So. Uh, and then I was pleased at the end where we had a chance to finish, you know, when it was tied 24-24. Um, would we be, a, you know, it's important for us to be a good finishing team. I thought that, that showed up. Yeah, another message that you had talked about, be let's finish. Yeah. And you'd practice that way. You wanted them to have to, to respond in a team practice yeah. and practice was, late. Was, and they did a great job yeah, of that. I was totally hoping we have a chance to finish, you know. And then so I was glad that we had the two minute at the half where we had the um, stop and to go down and go on the two minute and then have a chance at the end to go into four minute. I was glad those situations came up for the team. You're, you said do such a great job of concentrating on all the positive things that are going on. I know there's some things that you're going to go back sure, and yeah. correct, which is always positive when you win. You go correct some stuff. Yeah, we got a long way to go. But uh, what I will say is that, you know, the work, the effort, the mindset of us just constantly trying to get better. That's the challenge. You know, every day at work, you know, let's, let's just try to get better and improve. And if we keep that mindset, keep attacking, uh, you know, little things to improve on, whatever the position. So let's find those and keep pushing each other. Hey, man, thanks for your time. Appreciate All right, it. Appreciate it. Thanks, All right, guys. there he goes. Dan Quinn gets a win in his first preseason game. Just one of many. Thanks, bud. Thanks. All right, thanks, Arch. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate that. And, uh, you know, talk about the chemistry of this team. You can see it in the head coach. They love to play for this, this new head coach. All right, we'll have much more from inside the locker room. More players coming your way. We'll head back to the Dome as the Falcons win it tonight, 31-24. More in a moment. Stay with us. And welcome back to Falcons Inside the Locker Room presented by Northside Hospital. Here are your final team stats. This is from the whole game. Obviously, the first quarter is what you really want to look at. The Falcons dominated that in yardage and everything else. Turnover 17 to nothing. But for the game, uh, Tennessee gets the edge in total yards. Passing yards, 286 for Tennessee, 254 for the Falcons. But again, it's those turnovers. Three for Tennessee, one for the Falcons, and of course the first team offense, no turnovers for the Falcons, and that's great. Hey, who's going to be on your DraftKings fantasy football team if you're not playing DraftKings? What are you doing? Julio Jones was my first pick, and I hope he was yours as well. You got a chance to grab him. 104 receptions last year, almost 1,600 yards, six touchdowns. I think he's going to have a lot more shots in the red zone this year, so I would expect him to get more touchdowns. Roddy White had 80 catches last year, battling injuries. Another good pickup for you. Devin Hester will give you some stuff in the return game, but Leonard Hankerson might be a better play. He'll be a lot of trust, a lot of uh, run from the slot. Don't forget about Devontae Freeman. Injured tonight, did not play. I think we're going to see him run up some numbers on the ground. He'll catch the ball out of the backfield in your PPR league, so uh, good choices there if you got some Falcons. They're gonna, their offense is going to roll this year. All right, we will take another break, and when we come back, we will have more from the Georgia Dome. We're going to hear from the starting quarterback, Matt Ryan. His rating tonight, perfect. And welcome back to Falcons inside the locker room. The Falcons win it 31 to 24. And fans, you know what that means. Each quarter the Falcons score this year, you're going to receive $40 off your tires at Kaufman Tire. Tomorrow only. I did this last year. Love my tires. Love the service there. So if the Falcons score in each quarter, you can receive up to 160. They scored in three quarters in this game, so you'll get $120 off tomorrow. That's a deal. They don't jack up the prices either. Great folks over at Kaufman Tire. All right, you know, the preseason is a lot about the rookies. You want to see what Vic Beasley is going to do. You want to see what some of the other rookies are going to do. So here's our Home Depot question of the night, and that's what, which rookie made the biggest impact tonight. Well, Robinson Therese had a pick. Vic Beasley had an offsides call. You're going to have to go look at the tape to really see how some of those rookies did. Uh, but I don't think a bunch of them really stood out tonight, and we'll see more of them as they go through 
uh, this season and this preseason. All right, we will be back right after this with more Falcons inside the locker room. Stay with us. Falcons Inside the Locker Room has been presented by Northside Hospital, a lifetime of care, and sponsored in part by the Georgia Lottery. You can't win if you don't play. Falcons win it 31-24. The Dan Quinn era starts with a bang, fast and physical takeaways. The offense scores a perfect script for the opener. Here's your Kia keys to the game. Anton Smith only nine carries for 18 yards. The running game was probably the only negative tonight, but without Devontae Freeman, maybe expect that a little bit because the passing game looked fantastic. The first team uh, offense goes right down the field, 91 yards. Matt Ryan, perfect defensive contribution, a couple of a sack, tur two turnovers. They were fantastic. All right, let's hear from the starting quarterback, Matt Ryan, six for six on his only drive. He's with Dave Archer. Matt, what a start. I mean, uh, I know that uh, you kind of script some things that you'd like to get done. It certainly looked like it looked pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. You know, obviously, uh, when you come into these games, you want to start fast. And, um, you know, I thought we did a great job after the penalty on special teams to get that first completion, then get the second one, get the, uh, get the ball moving. But um, I was proud of the way we executed, proud of the way. Uh, we kind of broke the huddle with some tempo, kept it moving pretty good, and, and uh, we were, you know, lucky to finish it with a touchdown. I think the fans uh, would like to try to dive into the mind of Kyle Shanahan, and does it, does it match up with what Matt Ryan's thinking? I think so. Uh, you know, I think Kyle, we both want to do the same thing, score points, win games. And, um, you know, Kyle's done a great job everywhere he's been. Uh, he, he really he matches up kind of every phase of the game, the run game, the pass game, kind of moving outside the pocket really really, really well. So uh, I think it's a thing and, and a style of offense that'll fit me and, and the guys that we have in the locker room really well. Well, hopefully we can get the ground game cranked up a little bit more. You guys did a great job with the play action game. And I know you're kind of a wizard when it comes to some of the play action games and hiding the football. And it certainly played out tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's part of, uh, of what we want to do. We want to keep a defense, you know, off balance and have them not knowing what we're what we're going to do. So uh, the more we can, you know, keep that going, the, the more we can get better at that uh, the next couple of weeks during training camp. That'll bode well for us. Last thing for you, Dan, has talked about finishing games, and, and everybody wants to throw kind of throw the, uh, the preseason games in the wind, but your team found a way in that last drive. Sean engineers a great drive to get the W for you. Yeah, anytime they keep, you know, they keep score, you want to win. And uh, I was fired up that our guys got it done in that four-minute situation. Sean had a great drive in the fourth quarter. Um, I think it was something like 16 plays, 16 play drive to, to take it down and punch it in. So proud of those guys, happy for them. And that's what it's all about. You know, those guys put in a lot of hard work during training camp and, uh, you know, you love to, to see them go out there and play well. Six for six, uh, four for four to Julio Jones and a touchdown. Nice job, man. All right. Thanks, Arch. Thanks, Flip. Appreciate you got it. it. There's Matt Ryan. All right, Arch, Matt, appreciate that. The Falcons win tonight 31-24. You know Dan Quinn can talk to his guys about getting a win. The second and third teamers coming back to get that. He can talk to his first, first teamers about doing what he has been preaching for so long. And for head coaches, when the players go out and do it, it kind of works in reverse too because now the players believe in the message. It's only one game. But the only way you can start 1-0 is get a win like that. We'll talk to you next time. Remember, right after the game, it's Falcons inside the locker room from New York next Friday. We'll see you then.